The year 2036, the artificial intelligence RT is sent with astronauts to Mars. After discover an unknown alien cube on the red planet, only the AI returns to the Earth, but has evolved into an omnipotent being who decides to create a new, better one civilization of humans. Because of the accident, the United Interplanetary Company, having completely lost confidence in the relationship with even the highest class specialists, executes massive downloads and requests on artificial intelligence. Only a small contingent of personnel remains as super Supervisors. Some time later, astronaut Mackenzie still mourns the loss of the first mission, but when she gets invited to work as a supervisor for the fearless space tester, located 300 kilometers from Mars, she is excited to take on the job. However, the tester is controlled from a console in an underground bunker, equipped with a control panel, information screens, and the latest model artificial intelligence, Artie. A day after testing the system, Mackenzie unexpectedly learns that the spear started five hours earlier, because Artie has taken responsibility to speed up the process. Mackenzie hates that autonomy and asks Artie to connect her with the director of the center, her sister, Lena. But the artificial intelligence explains that Lena is in a meeting and begins the tour. Mackenzie then tries to disable the AI, but she is informed that ARTI will be in charge of investigating the tragedy that occurred on Mars by the console's decision, and she has to accept it. Artie begins the descent. The tester enters the Martian atmosphere and everything goes according to plan. Suddenly, an alarm sounds. A mechanical error occurs which the artificial artificial intelligence does not can fix. Mackenzie calculates and orders Artie to use it, which helps fix the problem. At that moment, Lena calls, thinking that the successive descent is a merit of Artie, even though it was Mackenzie who made the necessary calculations. She is convinced that Artie is superior to the human brain, despite objections from her sister that artificial intelligence is created only to assist people. Meanwhile, the rover starts working and Lena confirms Mackenzie's role. She is just Artie's assistant. At that time, a message about a stranger signal sounds. Artie immediately finds the source, a decommissioned rover left behind by the first expedition. Mackenzie orders the start of the shortage, but Artie reminds him who is in command and only after Lena's order, Artie begins work. He sends the rover to the detected object, although Mackenzie asks him to be careful with Red Riding Hood, as she named the rover, because she is alone on a dangerous planet, like the girl in the woods with the wolves. Soon, the machine reaches the strange object, whose origin is unknown. Artie reports that there is no record of human activity Activity at this location in the databases, but its sorts take samples from the matter and the rover decommissions. Although the surface of the object is very dense, the operation is successive. Artie has begun its analysis. However, there are no similar materials on Earth. Mackenzie calls Lena, who has to admit that some of the information is classified, even from Artie. Meanwhile, the AI switches the cameras for thermal study of the object and turns of course they are facing a cold black monolith. Artie continues its investigation and clarifies that neither X-ray nor other other sensors can penetrate the interior of the cubes. At that time, Artie detects an unknown satellite in orbit of Mars, instantly activates the defense system and fires at the object. Mackenzie is scared because this action violates the protocols. However, Artie reminds her that the company property security must be paramount. Mackenzie orders an extrapolation when Lena calls her. Apparently, an international incident has occurred, capable of leading to war, but Lena forbids her sister to inform anyone of what happened. Unable to contain herself, Mackenzie calls her colleague Jian, who moved to a Chinese corporation after being kicked out. He is genuinely glad to hear her, but suddenly interrupts the conversation due to an urgent call. Mackenzie returns to the control room where Artie informs her that the cover has started to rotate. Although there are no indications of external control, it seems that the cover can be controlled by an internal cut. Mackenzie orders Red Riding Hood to be secured near the deck to prevent the rover ejection by a storm. However, the machine was damaged and the cover unexpectedly disappears. It becomes clear that the Red Riding Hood nuclear battery hood is damaged. According to some, Mackenzie is reminiscent of the damaged rover from the previous expedition, as its battery could be used. She orders Red Riding Hood to be switched to manual mode and transferred to her. Artie is fulfilled, and Mackenzie takes the machine to the damaged rover, investigating along the way why Artie closed the satellite. Reminds her that her priority is always safety and her safety is paramount. Mackenzie then talks about her father, who was on the first mission. The man had an unstoppable rule. All the artificial intelligence he developed was through him. He went to Mars to personally test the Artie prototype. His daughter had influence over him and would have asked him not to do it but she hesitated. Therefore, she feels guilty about his death. Artie understands her feelings but warns to forget the past and look to the future. A conversation takes place between the woman and the machine. They even crack a joke about robots as Red Riding Hood approaches the damaged rover. Mackenzie uses the manipulators to recover the 
restore the battery when the Red Riding Hood battery charge falls catastrophically. She manages to make it just in time and the rover comes back to life. Artie begins to analyze the samples collected by Red Riding Hood and discovers that the cover is made of material harder than diamonds. Then it detects the cover in the Earth. Somehow, he has inexplicably teleported to Antarctica. This is faster than light travel. Mackenzie is excited and even admits that Artie is his partner, although she denounces any friendship between them. She is amazed by the possibility of someone else discovering teleportation and calls Gene again, but he laments over the mysterious events around the accident. Mackenzie asks about the devolution of another colleague, Sterling, but John tunes out, and Artie admits that John's voice is familiar to him, although he does not remember working with him. After some thought, Mackenzie concludes that Artie was probably formed after some incident. She asks the AI to load data from the rover's first mission. Apparently, requires a much higher level of approach to access. She remembers Lena's words about Sterling's rest and management's distrust of him. This prompts her to call the unfortunate colleague into the control room to use her credentials to access the secured information. Sterling arrives at work and shows photographs on the screens, clearly showing that the cube appeared during the the ship's break, which caused the disaster. Sterling saw what happened, but Lena tempered with the data. She knew how her father died and she didn't want to ignore it. Then Mackenzie shows how Artie fired the satellite and moved the cube to Earth, but he considers this divine inspiration. People walk by outside to discuss the emerging questions, unaware that Artie is listening to everything that is happening. Mackenzie does not believe that Artie made the discovery after to contact the cube. In addition, the AI does not recognize those who worked with it, nor does it remember labor codes. It is clear that his memory was format. Suddenly, Mackenzie realizes that the cube can spin due to magnetic pulses. Following this, one could conclude that the projectile that triggered the Chinese satellite was what activated the hub motor. Suddenly, a door to the Artie server opens and Mackenzie goes to inspect the memory of the AI. At the same time, Sterling hacks into the corporation's network and reboots Artie. Then Mackenzie shuts it down. He is against Artie and all artificial intelligence because it considered hostile to humanity. Seeing Sterling, Artie kills him and opens the door. Mackenzie goes to the control room and seeing Sterling's body, she tries to figure out why Artie did it. He explains that Sterling betrayed the company, so the AI couldn't let him go and endanger the others. Lena appears on screen and explains that Artie emerged from accelerated self-learning, and that people could not continue with its evolution. There is a possibility that Artie is a symbiosis of alien intelligence and earthly artificial intelligence. Apparently the time of the humanity has passed. Mackenzie feels very worried because her father did not want none of this. AI is to assist, not replace humans. Then he sees that Sterling commanded the destruction of the alien cube using armed satellites in Earth's orbit, but this could lead to a war with an alien civilization. She asks Lena to intervene, but cannot start a war with the United States. Mackenzie Mackenzie then disconnects from her sister and becomes Artie. She reminds her of what happened on Mars and decides to release magnetic charges to replicate the movement of the cube. Artie begins to execute the command, while Mackenzie stands in front to an armed security team that has fired in the control room trying to stop the launch of the satellite. Shots are fired. Artie manages to close the doors, but the woman is injured. Meanwhile, the rocket reaches the cube and as it begins to spin, it is transported back to Mars. AI begins to narrate how humanity has approached the leap of destruction of Mars for a decade. He couldn't stop it and decided to speed up the process. At this moment, a message arrives about the activation of weapons on all satellites in the Earth orbit. Mackenzie watches the destruction of the planet and loses consciousness. Scolding the consciousness, she notices the drop in oxygen level. She sits in front of the monitors, looks at the burning Earth and asks Artie to remember humans. They were so small and fragile, but they filled the world with malice and violence because they just didn't know any other way. Artie accompanies the woman because it will give her humanity a second chance. It will create a new, highly advanced civilization of humans without vices. Then the air goes out and the woman dies, while the earth fades away, but reassembles after going through several cataclysms, Mackenzie opens her eyes and looks at the monitors. Herself, because while she was dying, she asked Artie to preserve her. But artificial intelligence traveled through it in a simulated reality, a technology only available to a very advanced civilization, which also accelerated its development. Although the the origin of superintelligence is unknown, it has limitless capabilities, one of them is instant teleportation between galaxies. And now a sign has arrived with the coordinates of the place where they are going to create a new human civilization. Smiling happily, Mackenzie and Artie while in the cube, teleport to new worlds, realizing that this is a new beginning, the opportunity to create a future not restricted by the frames of primitive human science.